welcome to New Generation SDA Church, or New Gen for short. We are so excited to have you with us today. Here, our mission statement is to resemble, reveal, and reflect the character of Christ to others through the gospel message. Our vision statement is to create a new generation of disciples who are continually experiencing the unconditional love of Jesus and are excited to form new relationships with others through a variety of ministries. We value love, joy, peace, truth, respect, grace, stewardship, and relationship. And our hope is to connect with you beyond the service today and build long-lasting relationship. Please feel free to leave us your information with any of the ushers in the front lobby or simply scan the QR code on the screen which will allow you to plug in your information directly. We're so glad that you took time out of your day to spend some time with us and our God in worship. Whether you plan on visiting us back in the future or you're just passing through this once, your presence means a lot to us. We pray that the new gen experience is one that you will never forget. Welcome. Good morning, happy Sabbath again, church. Come on now. God grant us another day, another Sabbath to rejoice. So I'm going to say it again. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. We all have, are aware that the evil spirits are working hard. So that shows us, that tells us that God is soon come. We need to prepare ourselves, not only mentally, physically, emotionally, but spiritually. So, we prayed this morning, though it wasn't live. I'm going to extend a special welcome to each and every single one of you who are here this morning. Because with God, we are here and we're looking good. You don't have to stand. I'm only going to ask that you all please bow your head for a word of prayer so that we can start our song service. Father, I want to thank you. I want to glorify your name. We want to exalt your name for all that you have done for us now that we are here this morning we prepare to worship you father as we have been doing please be with me the praise team the musicians and those who will be preaching your word be with us throughout the day and your precious name we do pray amen we're going to start with marvelous grace number 109 marvelous grace of our loving lord grace that exceeds our let us all sing together, number 109. Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mouth our Lord, there where the blood of Oh 
going to continue with number 534. Will your anchor hold in the storm of life? Number 534.
last one will be number 246. generation good morning new generation how many people are happy to be in the house of the Lord today let's put your hands together for Jesus Amen. on the behalf of the community center department we would like to thank everyone who comes every week to help volunteer to serve the community. Also, we'd like to thank everyone who helped financially that's not able to come out and help, but give something towards the mission. And as we're going to collect today, because every second Sabbath is for the community center department, we want to thank everyone who's helping out in that aspect. So as we get ready to come forward to put our uh, offering towards the community center department. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer and I'll turn it over to our chorister. Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you once more again for your grace and your mercy, oh God. As we are going to collect a offering for the community center, oh God, we ask that each and every offering that is collected will go towards helping your people, oh God. Father, we ask that you will do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. We ask that you will forgive us of our sins, and oh God, whatever that we bring today, oh God, that you will multiply it, and that we can always have something to give to the people. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. We ask all of this in Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. As you bring your offerings forward, we're going to sing number 369, Bring in the Sheaves. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noon time, in the dewy air, waiting for a harvest, in the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in 
Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Let us stand as we invite the Holy Spirit to come in this place. Sing well. our church values let's repeat together john 3 16 and exodus 28 verse 11 john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have an everlasting life exodus 20 verse 8 through 11 remember the sabbath day to keep it holy six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within your gate. For the six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in it, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Our church mission statement say to resemble and reveal and reflect the character of Christ to other through the gospel message our values I will read the bold print and you will read the lighter print we value love we value joy we value peace we value truth we value respect. We value grace. We value stewardship. Together, we value unity and relationship so we can demonstrate oneness in Christ. Thank you.
Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Today's scripture reading will be taken from 2 Peter 1, verse 3. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called, the, called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Sabbath, everyone. Um, you may be um, a kneel for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for the Sabbath day that we are here together, gathered to praise you, to worship you, to adore you. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to wake up this morning all healthy and strong. Everything is working in our body, our mind. We thank you, Lord, that we are still here because so many people are afflicted at this moment with all kinds of burdens. Dear Lord, all these kids who lost their life, their parents expect them to come home that day. But it didn't happen. May your will be done in, the, in, the, in those families' life, Lord. May you bless them, give them the strength to continue the journey. All of us who doesn't go through anything, Lord, it's not because we are special. It is not because we are better than those who's who's are afflicted, but it's because of your grace, of your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us to serve you. It's not our choice, but it's your choice for us to be here, Lord. And there are so many people who need you to call them also, Lord. May you call them so they could be here and serve you all over the world. Dear Lord, this time is so uncertain that every day we wake up, we thank you, we praise you. 
because when we go to sleep, we don't know if we're going to wake up the next day. We don't know what's going to happen. Everything is in your hand. We don't have any control over nothing. You're the one who's in control of everything. You're the Alpha and the Omega. You know our beginning from our beginning to the end, Father. This morning, I ask you to bless each and every one of us here because you know everything about us. You know what's going wrong in our life. You know what's right. May you intercede in each of our lives and bless us according to your will. May this morning, everybody who comes here, we come all empty. We leave with something. May your week be blessed. May our children be blessed. May each and all of our family members are blessed in these different ways. Dear Lord, some of us have family members who are sick. Some of us have death. But we know that you are here. You never leave us alone. You are always with us, no matter what we're going through. And we ask you, Lord, to talk for us what we cannot talk for ourselves. We, are, we ask you to go before us and clear the way, clear the path for us, Father. And some of us have to drive so far to come here every Sabbath. I ask you, Lord, to give them traveling mercy every Sabbath, every time they have to come and do your work, Father. May you bless them abundantly for what they're doing, Father. Dear Lord, um, soon we will have a preacher. Lord, may your word inspire the preacher. May your word go through the preacher to touch our hearts, to touch our lives. Lord, I ask you every day that don't let us come here to warm up the bench, but let us come here to praise you. Every time we come here, we get something may transform our life so we could change our life and whatever that's wrong, we change it one by one, bit by bit, so we could get closer to you, Father. Dear Lord, may you bless us abundantly that everywhere we go, that your Holy Spirit, your glory shows in us, Father. It doesn't matter what we're going through on this earth, but we know we're not, we're not gonna live here forever. We are coming here to worship you. We're trying to get closer to you so we could reach our destination. May you wash our heart, Lord. Those who have a heart of stone, remove the stones and replace it with a heart of flesh, Father. May we love our brothers and sisters. May we live in harmony. May we be there for each other in love and harmony. May you accompany us every single day of our life and do for us what nobody else can do for us, what we cannot do for ourselves. And bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
boys and girls. Good morning, boys and girls. You guys sound like you didn't have breakfast. We didn't have breakfast this morning? Yes, yes someone had breakfast. How are you guys doing this morning? You guys good? Well, this morning, I'm going to need two volunteers to help me with children's story. Okay, I can have Gabby and me. All right, let's start with Gavin. Can someone tell me what they see on this box? Cereal? Almond crunchy honey oats. Does anyone eat this? Yes? This is the nasty one. No? You guys like the Fruit Loops, right? The Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Okay, can I, Gabby, can you shake the box for me? It sounds like cereal, don't it? No? It doesn't sound like cereal? Okay, smell it. Smell it. Does it smell like cereal? No. Okay, shake the box again. Is it heavy like cereal? No. Okay, I have a helper here. His name is Mervin, and you're going to open the box, and you're going to pour it inside the bowl for me. Can you do that? Yes. Okay, go ahead and pour it. Yes, pour everything in there. What? What do you see in there? Crayons. What do you see? Crayons. What is crayons? That's a scam, right? But what does the box say? Wow, wow. So, so it sounds like cereal, right? Did it smell like cereal? Well, sometimes not everything seems to be what they are. How about let's try a different box? Mika, can you grab that box? What type of cereal is that? I know you guys like that one, right? Yeah, yeah. Shake the box, Mika. Does it sound like cereal? Yes, it sounds like cereal. Smell it. Does it smell like cereal? It smells like a box. It smells like, <laughs> she said it smells like a box. Okay, let's see what's in this box. Pour it in the bowl for me, Mika. What? What's in this box this time? Cereal. 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 Amen. So it smells like cereal too, right? It tastes really good. I had it this morning. <laughs> but you see, sometimes things aren't really as they seem to be. Agree? We may hear it. We may see it. We may smell it. But things are not what they seem. But there is one thing we can always be sure of. And that is God's love for you and me. Amen. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 verses 1 that faith is to be sure of the things that we have not seen. God is as sure as the box of breakfast cereal that always has breakfast cereal in it. Amen. When you have faith in God, guys, you can trust him and believe that he will always take care of you. Do you guys agree? Yes, yeah, so let's have a round of applause for our volunteers this morning. They did a great job, didn't they? Now, can I have another volunteer to pray for us? Ryan, would you like to pray? Amen. Now, guys, bow your head and close your eyes for prayer. Dear Most Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us see this day, Lord. Thank you for letting us come to your church, Lord, so we may worship you, Lord. Please protect us. And let this day go smoothly. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, guys. You may go back to your mom and dad. Once again, new generation. I heard like two people. Good morning, once again, new generation. This is the day that the Lord has made. Is anybody glad? 
I heard this side. I heard this side. I said, this is the day that the Lord has made. Is anybody glad? Praise God, praise God, praise God. Uh, before I turn it over to Sister uh, Kiki, I just wanted to welcome everyone in the house of the Lord this morning. Yes, our shepherd, Pastor Reuben Joseph, is not here at the moment, but on the behalf of our shepherd, Pastor Reuben, we welcome everyone today into the house of the Lord, and we hope that today you are blessed beyond your own measures. Uh, Sister Kiki. Yes, Elder. Oh. Uh, good morning, church. There you go. Uh, hello. Hello. That was, I don't know who that morning was for, but it wasn't for me. Good morning, church. Now I give God a hand and clap. There we go. Yeah. Hallelujah. Honestly, Elder, honestly, you guys look really good. That's like, right. You guys look good. Right? Now give yourself a round of applause. Please. We'll be excited for our Elder. Should <laughs> I let you deliver the news? I'll let you deliver. Nah, you can go ahead and deliver the news. Guys, what are we excited about? Can somebody tell me? So only two, only, I guess only you two will be attending? Let's try this. Flowers. Okay, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe it slipped their mind. It's been a long week. It must have yeah, been. so because we work really hard for this, right? Really, really hard. Flowers, we're ready for you later. Listen, if you miss it in the Bahamas, you say if you miss it, you diss it. You have to come, guys. We worked really hard, uh, which was about two weeks, three weeks? About three. About three weeks. And if you see the outcome, guys, you have to come. Flowers, the men of new generation are awesome men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, fellas. Yeah. Come on, fellas. Man, the fellas, the fellas came through for our flowers. The fellas made this all possible to have this banquet to honor you ladies. Please, we do ask that you be in attendance at 7.30 p.m. on the dot. Yes, it will still be Sabbath, but we will close Sabbath as a family together, and the celebration will begin. Everyone is welcome. What is the attire? Um, no jeans, um, no tank top. I don't know if you go in your closet, your wedding dresses and your, your gowns. Yeah, yeah, your gowns. Um, yeah, we want you to look your best, sharp. You look good now, don't get me wrong, but we want those dresses to come out. And we have prizes, Elder. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, do we, we tell do. them what it is or nah. we let them come? Okay, don't okay. tell them. They got to come and see. Guys, we, are, we have something planned by the grace of God. Um, he put this in our, in our, this idea in our, man, in our mind, and we thought it would be best. Let's honor our flowers. New Generation is an awesome church. The men are amazing, and our flowers have this church glowing. Yes. So why not honor them? Guys, I'm excited. I don't know about y'all, but I'm excited. Can I see a show of hand who's going to be here? Like, there we go. Oh, okay. All right, those that don't come, you'll hear about it. Or you see announcement next hour, and you'll be like, oh, man, I wish I came. But we're looking forward to you guys coming out. Praise God, praise God. As you heard, tonight, 730. And this is a, oh, it's free, by the way. It's free. Everyone is welcome. But this is a grown people affair, which means if you have a child, find a babysitter. Yeah, I got real quiet real quick. Yeah, if you got kids, you got one or two, uh, drop them off to your parents' house or something or your parents' parents or something because this is a, an adult affair, all right? It's a grown people affair, so you get the point. So please, 7.30 tonight, uh, we would like to see everyone. We have space for everyone. All the ladies, it's your night. Come out so we can celebrate you. Oh, yeah. And gentlemen, you know, since it is a ladies' night, we will be serving the ladies. So please come out and support. All right, guys, we're going to turn it over to the praise team as they usher us um, in worship as we worship our God in spirit and in truth. Guys, thank you so much. Oh, before the praise team, before the praise team, 
you watch the screen for our Sabbath announcements. Good morning, New Generation Nation. We hope you and you and you had a wonderful, fantastic, and blessed week. I'm Sarah, and I'm here to keep you informed of all that is happening here at your church, New Gen. Our Elder of the Month is Elder Ketley Vavell. Please contact her at 305-773-3272 for all your spiritual needs. On August 8th, we are inviting everyone to our Summer 22 Volcano Bay Orlando Water Park trip. This is a trip you do not want to miss. Early bird specials went in on July 23rd, so secure your spot in full payment by July 23rd so you will not have to pay after fees. The price will include transportation and admission to the water park, so please see our senior pastor or elders for more information. Calling all new members and those who are interested in becoming a member of our church. Every Saturday at 10 a.m., we have a new members class located in our music room. Please mark your calendar. We are inviting everyone, that means whatever age you are, to our Back to School Block Party that will be happening right here on our campus parking lot, August 13th at 6.30 p.m. New Generation, in collaboration with our commissioner, Jean Monestine, will be here on our campus giving out free book bags filled with school supplies. We will also have food, live music, a bounce house, kind candy, snow cones, balloons, and much, much more. We will have an activity for everyone. So please mark your calendar and invite your friends and family August 13th at 6.30 p.m., right here on our campus is the place to be. Parents, very important announcement. Please bring your child to children's classes exactly at 10 a.m. It is very important to have them in class on time so they can participate in all activities and also eat breakfast that is available for them. Attention for those who would like to take training classes for medical missionary. Registration is still open. For those who would like to give their payment, all you have to do is follow these steps. Scan the QR code and select payment, and it will take you directly to Adventist Giving. And then you will select the church, New Generation, and then on the section that says Medical Missionary, you can send your payment through there. It's just that simple. Please continue to register as we need a head count of how many people will be attending. These classes are open to everyone and will begin on June 25th, so invite all your family and friends. Well, that's all our time. If you are visiting with us today, we would like to thank you so much for making New Generation a part of your weekend. Remember to follow us on all social media platforms at New Generation SDA Church of North Miami. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. May God bless you and see you all next time. Amen. Sometimes when life gets rough, we don't even feel like praising. Can I be honest for a second? But instead of saying, hey God, I got a big problem. Say problem. Say problem. I got a big God. We should praise him in the good and we should praise him in the bad. So I'm inviting you all, let us please stand as we give these next couple of minutes to God, amen? Praise you, Lord, 
with all my soul, with all my soul, I'll praise you, Lord. Praise with my mouth and with my life, and everything I do, I'll praise. Yeah, I'll praise you, Lord. With all my soul, with all my soul.
Alyssa Delva was born in Haiti and grew up in South Florida. She has a BSN from Barry University and is a registered nurse. She also has a BA in Religious Studies from Berman University in Alberta, Canada. She is passionate about helping teens and young adults on their discipleship journey and has been an active youth ministry leader since her teen years. She is currently a member of the Mount Pisgah SDA Church. Kalissa has been married to the love of her life, Scott Delva, for about seven years. They just welcomed their first child, Kisaya Jubilee, in December. She is a former religion teacher at Miami Union Adventist Academy and is a Christian lifestyle blogger. Follow her at Life Full and Free on Instagram, where she exposes the myth that being a Christian is dull, miserable, and legalistic. Instead, she wants to show the world that when we truly follow Jesus, our life will be adventurous, abundant, and free. New Generation Church. Please put your hands together and welcome to the stage Pastor Calissa Delva as she brings a message entitled The X Factor. Good morning, new generation. Oh, y'all extra over here, new generation. I like that. I ain't gonna lie. That's nice. That's nice. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. 
It is my joy and my pleasure to be here with you all this morning. I see so many familiar faces in the crowd. I'm here amongst family today. Isn't that right? So that means I can keep it real. That's right. That means I can tell it like it is. I'm going to give y'all this word the way the Lord gave it to me. I am excited this morning because we have an X factor, y'all. I'm going to have to try to control myself so that I don't get ahead of myself. Let me just get going here by uh, starting with a word of prayer, and then we're going to get right into the word of God. Heavenly Father, this is your moment. This is your time. We've all come for you. We've come to hear a word from you. We've come to be touched by you. We've come to be transformed by you. Lord, we all in this room stand in need of something from you today. And I know that because you are here, we will not leave empty handed. Holy Spirit, speak now. Holy Spirit, move now. Holy Spirit, break out in this place. We thank you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Ruben, for the invitation and for having me back. Um, I bring you greetings from my pastor and from the Mount Pisgah Seventh-day Adventist Church. And before I get into the word, I just want to share a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in the church. Uh, first, actually, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, I grew up in a Pentecostal church, going to church with my mom and my grandma. And later on, I became a Seventh-day Adventist around middle school age. And the interesting thing, uh, I found this out just a few years ago. My grandmother told me that she would often come back to the Sunday school class and she find me, my little six or seven year old self, teaching the rest of the kids. <laughs> and I said, Grandma, that's not true. She said, I'm telling you, ask your old Sunday school teacher. You used to be back there teaching the kids. And I'm like, what was I saying at seven years old in front of a bunch of other seven year old kids? But you see, Jeremiah says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Some of y'all might say, I can't speak. I'm too young. I can't speak. I don't know enough. I can't speak. Insert your excuse here. But God says, don't say you're too young. Don't say you're too old. Don't say whatever the excuse is for you must go wherever I send you and you must say whatever I tell you and don't be afraid of the people. That song the praise team just sang, that's for me because I struggle with fear. I'm a slave to fear. But God is saying this morning, don't be afraid. I will be with you everywhere you go. I will protect you. Y'all ain't even getting into the sermon yet. I'm just sharing my story. I'm just sharing my story. I ain't even getting into the word yet. The Lord reached out and he touched my mouth. God says, I have put my words in your mouth. Go and speak. And so I think from a very young age, as I reflect on my life and stuff, I realize, okay, I think God has maybe called me, called me to share, called me to speak. So in high school and in college, I was the youth director at my church for many years. And as I got older, I started to sense that maybe this was not just a, a hobby that I was doing on the weekends. I started to sense that God was calling me to take this a little bit more seriously and to take ministry a little more seriously. So I went to nursing school and after nursing school, I did something very dangerous, y'all. Y'all be careful. I prayed for direction. Y'all be careful now. Be careful when you ask God, what do you want me to do? Because he'll answer you. And I said, Lord, all right, I'm graduating and I'm done. And I'm expecting I'm going to start my career now. And God's like, yeah, 
I want you to move to a whole nother country, go back to school, and study theology. I just finished four years, y'all. Who's trying to go back to school? You know what I mean? Like, graduation is in May, and in, in July, I'm passing my boards, and in August, I'm on a plane. But when you follow God's will for your life, he'll take you on some adventures. So one of my college professors, he was a legend on the campus. His name was Dr. Samraj. Shout out, I don't know if I have any BU family watching, Berman University. Dr. Samraj was the, the philosophy professor there, and, and he, he's like a walking book of quotes. Wise man, everybody loves him. And he once said, life is only a test for those who want to do good. And that, that always stuck with me. Life is easy when you just wanna do whatever you want, live however you want. And you're your own God and you follow your own way and your own will. But when you wanna follow God's will for your life, it's challenging. I'm not gonna lie. Have you ever felt like that? Has anyone ever felt like, man, this Christian thing ain't for me? I, I said I'm with family, can I keep it real? Has anyone ever felt like I'm always failing when it comes to living for God? I keep messing up. I can't get it right. You ever feel like it's a fight, it's a struggle? Well, that's because it is. But Peter writes his second letter specifically to address this issue. And he wants to encourage us that regardless of what opposition we face in life, we can live righteously. I'm telling you today, I'm telling you this morning, we can live righteously. We can live for God. I came this morning to New Generation to encourage somebody. Somebody needs to hear this, somebody needs to get set free this morning. I came to share this word so that you can realize, y'all, we have everything we need. New Gen, I say we have everything we need. I need that to settle down deep in your soul this morning. We have everything we need. I want you to be confident this morning that in Christ, in who? Not in you. See, that's why most of us be struggling, because we're trying to do this on our own. We're trying to do it in our own strength. We think we slick. We think we smooth. We think we got everything going on. We got a little education. We got a little degree. We got a little job or a little money. You're trying to put your stock and your weight in those things. That's why we're failing. But in Christ, you are completely equipped to conquer the Christian life. I said in Christ, we have everything we need. Listen to what Romans says in uh, Romans chapter eight, verse 32, I love this text. God did not keep back his own son. Y'all, I'm a new mom. Yeah, I'm a new mom. Okay, fresh, fresh, she's five months old. I can't imagine giving her up. I can't, ima I can't imagine what the circumstance would be that would make me willing to give her up. Have mercy. But the father says, I have not even kept back my own son from you. It says, if God did this, won't he freely give you everything else? Don't you see he's given us the most precious thing in his son? That means there's nothing else that he'll keep back from you. That's what I came to share this morning. Let's get into the text, y'all. Let's get into the word. 2 Peter 1, verse 3 to 4. I'm sorry, I'm excited. This thing's been cooking in my spirit for the last couple weeks. And I'm excited. 2 Peter 1, verse 3 to 4 says, His divine power has given us everything we need to live a godly life. I'm not making this up, y'all. This is coming from directly from the word of God. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life. Through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. 
Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promises. Remember that, I'm coming back to that later. Through these promises, you and I can participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Y'all need to get in y'all word. There's power in the word of God. Y'all need to read your word. Stop letting this stuff collect dust. Open up your Bibles. Listen to what this says. You messed up you. Filthy you. Failing, miserable, all that, all that you. It says you can participate in the divine nature. It's saying you can be like Jesus. God is saying here that I've given you power to be like me. I've given you promise after promise that you can claim to escape the corruption of the world. So I don't have a lot of time this morning. I can't go through every last thing, but I can share four points. I'm going to share four things that Jesus has given to us. We'll get, all right, we'll y'all take some notes if you want to put them in your phone, all right? Let's discuss four things that God has given us to enable us to live a godly life. And all of these things are found in Christ Jesus. Number one, Christ, in Christ we have cleansing. That's number one. In Christ we have cleansing. Romans tells us that there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When we come to Christ, we don't get condemnation. We get cleansing. Oh, church quiet. Church quiet. You know what that tells me? That tells me, I don't know if y'all really believe that. I don't know if y'all really believe that. Have you really taken that in? That whatever it is that you are guilty of, you are not condemned for it. Don't get it twisted. We're all guilty. The Bible says all of us have sinned. All of us have come short of the glory of God, but we are not condemned. Instead of condemnation, we get forgiveness when we come to Christ. Instead of condemnation and the punishment we deserve, we get cleansing. He says, come, come, let me clean you up, my son. Let me clean you up, my daughter. I see you. I see everything. Come. Stop letting whatever that thing is stop you from coming to Christ. He is the one that's going to give you the cleansing. 1 John 1 verse 7 tells us his blood cleanses us from all sin. John 15 verse 3 says, you all here have already been made clean because of the word spoken to you. I'm going to read this because I think it's important. I wrestled with this text. I told you I'm going to be transparent, y'all. I wrestled with this text, and, and uh, I was like, okay, you know, I'm just going to read, like, part of it because I don't want to throw off my sermon and get everything off track. And you know what I saw yesterday? I saw a post on Instagram that said, do not edit the word God has given you. Don't cut it out. Don't cut it out. It don't matter who's offended. Say it how it is. Don't take nothing out. Don't put nothing in. I said, oh, Jesus, ooh, ooh, okay. Let me just read the word of God because this ain't my words. And if you mad, take it up with Jesus, okay? First Corinthians says in verse, in chapter six, first Corinthians says in chapter six, it says here, verse nine. Let me go back, let me go back. Verse nine, yes. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't fool yourselves. I don't know who need this word, but somebody need it because God said you need to read it. Those who indulge in sexual sin or who worship idols or commit adultery or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or are thieves or greedy people, or drunkards, find yourself in the text, find yourself in the text. Those who are abusive, 
or cheat people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. This way, I was going to skip all that and just kind of summarize it. God said, read the text. I'm going to be obedient. Some of you here were once like that. That's what the verse say. Some of you here were once like that list I just read. But you were cleansed. Come on, church. Come on. That's good news. That's not us anymore. You were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our God. Did you call on him? Did you call on him? Then the Bible says you've been cleansed. Did you call on Jesus' name? Maybe you weren't in here because you haven't called yet. If you haven't called on the name of Jesus, call him. And it says he will make you right with God. Amen. All right now. So in Christ, we have cleansing. Stop boring God with stuff from your past. He's dropped it long time ago. He's ready to move on. Stop bringing that stuff up. It's gone. Enough of this. Stop carrying that stuff with you. Put it down. If you are carrying your past, then there's no room for God to put in you what he's trying to put in you. You don't have no space in your hand to pick up what he's trying to give you. Put it down and leave it there. Don't you see? Your cleansing is only the beginning. This is only point number one, (laughs) y'all. Okay. This is only the beginning. The salvation Jesus offers you, that's not the end. He just want to save you to save you. He's not just cleansing you to cleanse you. Our salvation is for a purpose. There is a reason for our cleansing. We are cleansed for our calling. We are cleansed for our calling. Look at what happened to Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 6. It says, in the, king, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And he says he was sitting on a lofty throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. He saw God and his response was, it's over, it's a wrap, I'm done. That's it. Because I'm messed up, I'm filthy. I know I'm out. Because I know I deserve death for the things that I've done. He says, it's over. I am doomed for I am a sinful man. When you come face to face with God, when you really see the glory and the holiness and the majesty and the beauty of God, all you can see is how wretched you are in comparison. But that's all right. Because look at this response. He says, I'm a sinful man. He confesses, y'all. He repents. I have filthy lips and I live among a people with filthy lips, yet I have seen the king. And you know what happened after that? After that confession, God doesn't banish him from his presence. He said, ooh, you filthy, you gross, you nasty, you dirty, get out of here, I don't want to see you. God does what he always does. He makes the first move. He comes to you. It says, then one of the seraphim flew to me, flew to me, because I'm stuck, I can't move, with a burning coal that he had taken from the altar, with a pair of tongues, he touched my lips with it and said, see, this coal has touched your lips, now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Isaiah has been cleansed. So you think in the story, Isaiah lived happily ever after. I've been clean. You know, I saw God. He touched my lips. I'm clean. I'm forgiven. End the story. That's just the beginning. Because after his cleansing, it says, then I heard the Lord asking, whom shall I send? Who should I send as a messenger to these people? Who will go for us? 
That's a rhetorical question, y'all. You know what I'm saying? God is like, hmm, anybody want to do this for me? What do you think Isaiah's response was after receiving the grace of God, the forgiveness of God, the mercy of God? There's only one response after you get the love of God poured out onto you. It's here I am. Send me. Whatever you want to do with me, I'll go. Wherever you want to send me, I'll go. Whatever you ask of me, I will give it to you. Don't you see? That's the only appropriate response when what we deserve is his wrath, y'all. That's true. When all we deserve is his wrath and we get mercy and grace, Lord, whatever you want to do, I'm here. I'm yours. So you see, number two, not only have we received a, a, a cleansing, but in Christ we have a calling. You see your pastor there. That was your pastor. <laughs> you can go back to the last slide real quick. Uh, baptizing one of my former students. That's not the end of the journey, y'all. That's the beginning. <laughs> That's Pastor Reuben. Listen, when you receive that cleansing that baptism, baptism symbolizes, that's the beginning of the journey. Each and every one of us here, number two, in Christ we have a calling. I need y'all to really get this because somehow, somewhere along the line, we began thinking that it's the pastor's job to preach the gospel. It's the speaker's job. It's the evangelist or the elder or whoever's in leadership. It's their job to do the work. That is not the plan of Jesus. His plan is that each and every one of us has our own calling. Each and every one of us have a purpose. We are called to have a relationship with Jesus first and foremost. We are called to have unity with each other. I can't go through all the texts, there's so many of them. We are called to live with hope and to share in the glory of God. We are called to share the gospel with a desperate and dying world. And the way you do that is not the way I'm going to do it. And the way I'm going to do it might look different from the way you do it. That's the point. You've got something in you nobody else has. Your story is unique to you. Your testimony is unique to you. You're the only one with your voice. I cannot do what you can. Therefore, if you're not doing your job, there's something missing in the body of Christ. I can't replace it. I can't do it for you. Because you are uniquely equipped and designed to do something for God that nobody else can do. It's time to step up. Step into your calling. Stop relying on Pastor Reuben and on the elder and on the praise team and come into church. Everybody does look good. I ain't going to lie. Everybody look good. But there's more to this Christian life than this. What is occurring between Sunday and Friday? When you're at work and when you're at school and when you're at home, this is where the majority of life takes place, not in these four hours Sabbath morning. What are you doing during those moments to fulfill the calling of Christ on your life? The Bible tells us that we have been called out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Step into that light, y'all. Step into that calling and declare the praises of the one who called you. Let the people around you know who Jesus is and what he has done for you. I want y'all to know I'm speaking to myself too, okay? I struggle with this. I struggle with this. But I know that I have a calling. Because of the amazing gospel that we have received, y'all, because of what Jesus has done for us and his incredible grace, Paul encourages us to live a life worthy of the calling that you've received, Ephesians 4.1. He says in 2 Thessalonians, God chose you 
I want everybody in here to know that you are chosen by God. Please, you are chosen by God. You are called by God. He says, and we keep praying that God will make you worthy of being his people. We pray for God's power to help you to do the good things you hope to do and that your faith makes you want to do. I want you to know that God, the one who calls you, is faithful. Oh, that ain't mean nothing to nobody. God is faithful. That means if he called you, he's going to equip you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. And he's going to be with you everywhere you go. The good work he began in you, he's going to complete it. I don't know who needed to hear that this morning. It don't matter how many times you fell. It doesn't matter how many times you've sinned and you've, you've gone back to the old patterns and the old habits and the old ways. God is faithful. It doesn't matter how unfaithful you are. He can't stop being faithful. It doesn't matter how much times you mess up. He can't stop being who he is. He is faithful and he's going to finish what he started in you. You have a calling. Let me move on. Let me move on. Number three. Number three, in Christ, we have community. Let me tell you something. Um, sometimes when you have something, you don't know what you have. New generation, everybody don't have what y'all have up in here. You better appreciate your church community because every time I come to New Gen, I can feel the fellowship. I can feel the love in this place. I can feel the spirit of God in this place. In Christ, <laughs> in Christ, we have community. Yes. Understand that what we have here, God has given it to us because we need it in this Christian life. Amen. You cannot do this walk alone. That's right. That's right. Jesus did not mean for you to be a Christian all by yourself. He gave us the gift of community, the gift of fellowship. Jesus meant for the Christian life to be done together because he knows it's challenging. He knows how tough it can be. So he gave us each other so we can walk together to support each other, to weep together when life gets tough and to celebrate together in the happy days and in the good times of life. In Christ, we though many form one body and each member belongs to the others. Romans 12 verse five, we belong to each other. Amen. This is how Jesus meant it. And I know what y'all thinking. I know, oh, Pastor Dove, no, that sounds so sweet and cute, but you know, church be messy. And sometimes people at church toxic and all this and all that, and it's true. But that's the point. This is where we practice grace. If, you, if everybody was perfect up in here, when would you have an opportunity to be patient? When would you have an opportunity to show kindness? Don't you see? He knew we'd get on each other's nerves. That's the point. He says, bear with one another. Forgive one another as I have forgiven you. This is the way that we grow in our faith is when we're rubbing with each other, rubbing up against each other and we get into conflicts and we get into disagreements. We're supposed to learn how to deal with one another with grace. How to deal with people you don't agree with. The church is meant to be modeling for the rest of the world what it looks like when people don't agree, but they still get along. And there's none of that in this country right now. People don't know how to just love each other even though they don't agree. We're the ones that's supposed to be showing the world what it looks like. Unity, not uniformity. In other words, everybody ain't gonna be the same. We're not all gonna think the same and talk the same and like the same songs and like the same volume at the praise team. You know, we all, we're gonna disagree. But the point is to learn how to love somebody you disagree with. God has given us community. 
Let me be honest with y'all. My spiritual walk right now, today, it's not where it should be. I, don't, don't get this twisted. See, what you're seeing here is the Holy Spirit, not the broken vessel. What's really here is a broken vessel. I'm spiritually weak right now. You want to know why? And I know I am. And the Spirit's been talking to me, and I know I am. You, know, you want to know why? Because I'm not plugged in to a community. Stop this. Now listen to me. Now listen to me. Church membership is not the same as being part of a community. Okay? So I know it's been a while since I've had a Bible study group. Since I've plugged in to a prayer group. Listen, if all you're doing is coming to church every Sabbath and you ain't got somebody you're praying with, you don't have somebody that's studying the word with you during the week, you know, your friends get together, two, three, four, five of y'all, ten of y'all get together for Bible studies and for prayer, you're not growing and you're not doing church. Okay? It is a lie of the devil to believe that you can do this all by yourself. God didn't set it up like that. I hate, can I tell y'all something that bothers me? I hate, I hear this all the time. I used to hear this all the time. I hate when people say, I'm going to just come to church and do me and, and just, I'm, I'm just going to come to church and get my Jesus and go home. Come on, y'all. Yeah, y'all know. Y'all know. Some of y'all, miss, y'all said that before or thought it. You know what? I'm just going to mind my business. I'm just going to come to church. I'm just going to pray and I'm just going to go home and that's it. I'm going to get my Jesus and go. You're not doing church. You're not doing church and you're missing a vital part of your Christian walk. God didn't intend for it to be that way. He intended for you to get messy with everybody else. Yeah. Can I share um, something I've been seeing lately going on, especially with a lot of young people? Let me just stop right here and give my little public service announcement. I've been seeing a lot of people doing this thing called deconstructing. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Deconstructing. Well, what that means is a lot of people are reviewing, re-examining previously held beliefs, things they grew up believing, and they're asking themselves, is this true? Is this even real? And hey, I am a firm believer in asking the tough questions. You should know what you believe and why. So there's nothing wrong with that. But a lot of people are also in this process just leaving their faith behind altogether, leaving the church behind altogether. Be careful. Even Jesus, when he came, he stripped away centuries of erroneous teaching from the church leaders. When he came, he gave the people a raw, simple, radical gospel. And the people were like, whoa, we've never heard someone teach like this before. But Jesus was clear. He said, my teaching may sound new and it may sound controversial and different. He said, be clear on this. I did not come to abolish the law or the prophets. Jesus wanted us to know there was nothing wrong with the word of God. There never was, there never has been, and there never will be. He came to stand up against the hypocrisy and the traditions of men that people were teaching as truth. What am I saying? What I'm saying is, you could turn your back on everything, but you got to stand on the word of God. You cannot, in these days and times, start thinking about letting your faith go. Don't fall for that. You cannot drop this, because this is our anchor. Y'all saying it earlier this morning, we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move. Grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. This is what's going to keep you. Jesus did not come to abolish the word of God. He came to help us understand it. So in your journey, in your questioning, in whatever it is that you're doing, don't leave the faith. Don't turn your back on Jesus and don't turn your back on the word of God. Now, regardless of my many critiques of the modern church, y'all, and I got a lot. (laughs) I got lots of things to say about the church. I ain't going nowhere. 
I'm not going nowhere. Because when Jesus comes back, he is going to present his church as a bride. He is going to present us cleansed to his father. And I'm going to be right here. I'm not going anywhere. The church is established by God, y'all. Whether you like it or not, he tells us that as we see the last days approaching, in Hebrews he says, let's consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. He says, in other words, think about how you can encourage the person next to you. This is what we should be doing. And he says, do not give up meeting together. Whoever's out there online right now, do not give up meeting together. Do not abandon the assembling of yourselves together. The Bible is clear on this. If you're asking, do I really need church? Yes. There's no question about it. Yes. The Bible says do not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. As we approach the last days, many people would be in the habit of leaving the church. Don't let that be you. It says instead encourage one another. All the more as you see the day of Christ approaching. As we get closer and closer to the return of Jesus, we need to be encouraging each other, not abandoning each other. We need each other now more than ever. So let's recap, y'all. In Christ, we have a cleansing. We have a calling. We have a community. You may be saying, that's great. Yeah, that's good. I'm fired up. Yeah. Uh, But I still feel like what God is calling me to do and who God is calling me to be is too much for me. I still, I still don't know. I still don't know. I hear you speak. I hear you. I just don't know. That's all right. That's okay. Because Christ has given us an X factor. Christ has given us an X factor. You ain't shouting now, but you're going to shout in a minute. You said, what's an X factor? Anybody know? Anybody watch sports or anything like that? Anybody? Okay. Well, don't tell me who won last night. I'm a good seven-day Adventist Christian. I did not watch the game. Okay? Don't say nothing. If you know, don't say anything. An X factor, for example, in basketball, is somebody who comes in and they shift the tempo of the game. Is somebody who is so good, they have something unique and special that they bring, and it may not be something that shows up on the stat sheet, but they they have intangibles, the uh, the, uh, basketball calls it, intangibles that just shift and change the course of the game when they come in off the bench. An X factor. Somebody that has an outstanding or extraordinary ability. That's an X factor. It's an excellence that you can't really describe. You, you can't put your finger on it. That's, that's an X factor. There's something about that person. It's an attribute or a quality, a characteristic of that person that goes beyond description. But here's the one I really like. An X factor is a variable in a given situation that could have the most significant impact on the outcome. An X factor is something that could really change the results, the outcome of the game. If that person is available to play or not, it makes a huge difference. Christ has given us an X factor, y'all. Listen, in, in the book of John, Jesus is saying, I gotta go. I gotta go, I have to leave. And, and when he starts to prepare the disciples for the fact that he will die, that he will be resurrected and he will go back to heaven, they, they get so overwhelmed because they don't want him to go. Do you blame them? I wouldn't want Jesus to leave either. Jesus says, you are so overcome with emotion by the fact that I'm telling you I have to go, you're not listening to what I'm saying. He's saying, I got to go. It is best for you that I go. How could that be? 
How could Jesus be saying it's going to be good? It's the best thing for us for him to go. He says, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the comforter won't come. We have an X factor, y'all. Ooh, Holy Spirit, it's your time. It's your time, Holy Spirit. He says, if I don't go away, then I can't send him to you. But if I do go away, then I will send you the comforter the advocate the holy spirit the holy spirit is a game changer y'all the holy spirit is a game changer he changes everything i don't think y'all understand the bible says that the spirit of god who raised christ from the dead lives in you don't you see that power that resurrected christ from the dead is in you right now available to you resurrection power is in you water walking power is in you demon fleeing power is in you bread and fish multiplying power is in you overcoming power is in you miracle working power is yours that power is available to you the holy spirit is our x factor He's that thing that people see in us, but they can't really understand. They can't put their finger on it. They can't really describe it. He's a game changer. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will give you power to bear fruit. Y'all know the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, long-suffering, self-control, all of that, right? What that means is the Holy Spirit gives us the power to transform who we are. Because we are not loving by nature. We are not patient by nature. But when the Holy Spirit is in us, y'all, he allows us, he empowers us to bear fruit. All of a sudden, we have gentleness where there was bitterness. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we have kindness where we used to just be mean. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we have joy. Even when it don't make no sense, we experience joy because he is in us. The Holy Spirit is a game changer, y'all. The Holy Spirit is our X factor. The Holy Spirit will give us power, not just to transform who we are, but he also empowers us to do the things that God has called us to do. So he helps us to bear fruit. But when the spirit comes, he also comes bearing gifts. Guys, I told you earlier before that we all here have a calling. But each and everybody sitting here has a gift too. We all have a gift. And I'm not talking about talents. I'm talking about spiritual gifts. When you are in Christ, you are a new creation. He renews you. He remakes you. And then he says, I got something for you. Whether that's teaching, whether that's faith, whether that's whatever it is, the spirit of God has given each and every one of us sitting here gifts. And he enables us with those gifts to fulfill our calling, you guys. The Holy Spirit is our game changer today. Acts tells us that when the Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. Acts chapter, uh, chapter one tells us, you will receive power and you will be my witnesses telling people about Jesus everywhere you go. Don't you see? the power he gives us, the transformation we experience, it's all for the glory of God. It's all so that somebody else could come to salvation. All that power, that resurrection power, that healing power, the power of the Holy Spirit living and dwelling inside of you, why is that there? It's so that somebody else could be saved, y'all. We see the state of the world. We see what we're living in. The world, now more than ever, needs to see Christians who are living by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
Christians reflecting the love of the Holy Spirit. Christians having the patience and the kindness that the Holy Spirit brings. This is what the world needs. Because without our X factor, y'all, we can tell people about Jesus. We can tell them about the Bible, but they want to see something real. Okay, you believe in Jesus? How has he changed you? What has he done for you? It's our power, the Holy Spirit in us, reflected. That's what gives our testimony strength. You can tell people about Jesus all you want, but if they see that you're bitter just like them, you got envy just like them, you got anger problems just like them, you react the way they do, you talk the way they do, you live the way they do, what, well, why should I come to Jesus then? But when we have that X factor in us, transforming the way that we live, transforming who we are, now people say, oh, oh, you like that because of Jesus? Mm. Now I'm listening. Because I can see there's a difference in you. You know, while I was preparing, I was asking God, I need an illustration, Lord, for this word. You know, it's a heavy word in terms of lots of Bible references and stuff like that. I mean, you know, people like stories, <laughs> you know? And I said, Lord, I need, I need something. And even up until yesterday, I'm like, I don't have, what happened? I need an illustration. I need something. Well, yesterday, I went shopping with my mom. You know, I had to figure out what I'm wearing today. Went to Marshalls, y'all. Marshalls. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Y'all like it? Okay. All right. So I went to Marshall's to figure out what I'm wearing today, found me a cute outfit, found me some cute shoes, and while I am shopping, let's call her Terry. Terry, who works at Marshall's, she comes up to me, and you know, I'm, I'm in my God is dope shirt, got my jeans on, got my J's on, you know, okay? So she sees me, probably sees this young woman looking fly, and uh, wearing a God is dope shirt. So she goes, excuse me, I've been seeing this shirt all around. God is dope. God is dope. What does that mean? Because somebody like you can't be wearing a God is dope shirt if it's bad. I'm like, okay, this lady, she don't even know me. What do you, what is she? Okay, so before I address that, because that, that made my ears stand up, somebody like you, she don't know me. Let me, let me answer her question first, and I'm going to come back to that. Well, I explained because she assumed dope meant something bad. So why is everybody wearing a shirt, God is dope, if dope means something bad? So I explained to her, no, you know, it's the culture. It's a slang term. Dope means cool, amazing, something you really like, something awesome. Yo, that's dope. That's amazing. I explained that to her. She goes, oh, I get it now. Okay. All right, that makes sense because I thought that was something bad. I said, yeah. Now, let's get back to that first thing you said. So I said to her, so why did you, why did you ask me? She's like, you know, I see people all the time with this. And I said, today, I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask her because there's something different about you. I'm like, what you talking about? I said, yeah, no, there's, I just, there's something, there's something different about you. So I, I feel like, you know, I should ask you. And I'm like, and I'm sitting there, I'm going, well, that's my whole sermon for tomorrow. Something about you, you can't really describe, but people could see it. Yo, I got my mask on. Do you understand? I'm wearing my mask. I'm in the store. I'm minding my business. And you mean to tell me she could see something in me? That's not me. That's the X factor, y'all. That's the Holy Spirit dripping off of me. When you walk in by the Spirit, people could see it. People could feel it. People could sense it. And I said, are you serious? Is that really? She said, yes, yes. I mean, I just, I felt like there was something. I'm like, this is, I can't really believe this is happening right now because this, and I told her too. I said, I'm going I'm to I'm use you tomorrow on my sermon. I'm going to tell this story because this is exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to brag on me, y'all. There's nothing good about me. Don't get that twisted. There's nothing about me. But when you walk under the covering of God, when you are dripped in the Holy Spirit, not Jays and all that drip, but when you're covered by the Spirit, 
people see it when you walk through the door. You don't even have to open your mouth. I ain't tell that, that lady good morning, happy Sabbath, God bless you. She saw me from a distance and she says, there's something about you. Let me ask you about God. We all here have that X factor available to us today. Guys, I've come this morning to let you know that God has got, gone out of his way to remove every obstacle, every barrier, every excuse that you could possibly think that you have for not living for him. So what's stopping you from living a godly life today? I want you to think about that. What is it that you're needing today? You know, let's do a little exercise real quick. I'm about to head up out of here. I'm wrapping up. But just call it out. Call it out. What's stopping you? What, what is it that you're needing? Fear. Self. Anything else? What's stopping you? Pride. What's stopping you? What's stop? Huh? Standing out. Ooh, friends. Listen, the what? The crowd have mercy. I read two scriptures at the beginning. The second one says, we have precious promises that are given to us. Today, y'all, I want to let you know the Bible is full of promises you can claim to help you in every situation. So if it is fear, the Bible says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind. If it is self, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed and the new has come. He's gotten rid of that old self. If it is friends, Christ has says, I've given you a new community. And if you walk with me, then you'll have fellowship one with another. I've given you new friends. Whatever it is that we stand in need of, the Bible is full of promises that we can claim so that we can have everything we need. Amen. Church, I want you to leave today confident. I want you to have supreme confidence in what Christ has accomplished for you. No more living small. No more living quiet. No more living like we don't have all authority and power given to us. Jesus says that I am leaving, I'm sending you, and all authority has been given to me. And I'm giving it to you. We've got to start living like we are the child of God we sang about. We have authority, y'all. We have access to power that this world has never seen. Think about it this way. It's like if you go to an iPad store, an uh, Apple store, I mean, or uh, if you're an Android person, you get a new phone, and the salesman is telling you everything, new features in the phone. You got all these features. And then you're like, whoa. This iPhone is amazing. This Samsung is amazing. Can you show me how to use it? How do I use this feature? He goes, no, 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 no. You're not supposed to use it. It's just supposed to be, make your phone, your phone look nice. You're not actually supposed to use all the features. Does that make sense? What's the point of buying an expensive phone if you can't use all the features? Well, what's the point of being a believer if you are not walking in the power and the authority that God has given you? What's the point of calling yourself a Christian if you are not accessing all that God has for you? Today I am inviting each and every one here. Take a moment to reflect. Are you living out your calling? Are you using those spiritual gifts? Are you part of that community? Some of us are all the way back at step one. We haven't even accepted the cleansing yet. We're still walking around with guilt. God has so much more for you. 
I want you to be encouraged today, motivated today, inspired today to leave this place and live your best life for God. The world needs to see it in you. There's somebody in your life, at your school, at your job, in your house that needs to see what it looks like when somebody's living in the power and authority of God. So I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you now to take hold of these precious promises in God's word. I'm inviting you, whatever it is that you are missing, that you feel like you're needing, God got everything you need. He's got everything you need. I want you to raise your hand, stand, come to the altar. If you need something today, whatever it is that you know you're needing, this is your time. This is your time to claim it. If there is something missing, if there is something that's going on in your life right now, it's holding you back, stopping you from living the life that God has called you to live. Why leave this place the same? You know, when we come into this building, it could all be for show. What makes the difference is the presence of the Holy Spirit here. And he is here. He is here right now to break whatever chain, to provide whatever healing, whatever you stand in need of. So I'm inviting you, if there's something you need from God, to start living your best life for him. Stand. Take this moment now to pray. Take this moment now to confess. Take this moment to reach out by faith and grab everything that is available to you. It's not too late. You're not too young. You're not too old. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you've been in this church, in this faith all your life. God is saying, I'm still calling you to live your best life for me. And you don't have to do it in your own strength. You don't have to do it in your own power. He has given you something that the world does not recognize. They see it, but they don't know what it is. He's given you his Holy Spirit this morning. Oh, thank you, Father. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for visiting us this morning and we thank you for this word holy spirit you showed up and you showed out as you always do when we're talking about you and father we ask right now in this moment that whatever we all are here standing in need of provide it oh lord there is nothing you cannot do there is no mountain too high that we can't climb it there's no valley that we've sunk in that's so deep that you can't reach us up out of it. Oh, Father, we're praying this morning for cleansing. Lord, there's some people that came in here and they're still burdened. Burdened by what they did last night. Burdened by what they did 10 years ago. They're still shackled. Lord, I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus for freedom. I'm praying that you would set people free of sin and guilt and shame in the name of Jesus. I'm praying that you would cast out generational demons right now in the name of Jesus. I'm asking Lord God that you would tear down strongholds right now in people's lives in the name of Jesus. I'm praying that you would pour out freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want power from on high to live for you because you died for us. Lord, whatever you have called us to do, please forgive us for our disobedience. Forgive me, Lord, for being disobedient, for taking my sweet time to obey. Oh, Father, help us when you call us to answer quickly like Isaiah. Here I am, send me. Oh, Father, as we go into this new week, here we are. Send us in our homes. Send us in our schools. Send us at our jobs. Lord, send us when we're online, when we're on TikTok and Instagram and all of our social media. We can witness even there. Let our light shine even there online, Lord Jesus. Oh God, 
we pray for this community we ask that you help us to bind closer and closer together as you get closer to coming help us not to abandon one another in these dark times but help us to encourage one another and lastly father pour out your spirit you promised that you would do it in the last days pour out your holy spirit let us experience revival reformation transformation lord god we want it we need it we're desperate for it we don't want to go back to the same lives heavenly father we need a shift and a change that only the game changer can bring that only the comforter can bring that only the holy spirit can bring pour your spirit out on us god we give ourselves over to you whatever your people stand in need of lord you see them you know their hearts you know what they're needing we come to you in faith because we know you have everything we need in jesus name amen amen Wow, what do you say, church? Man, give, give God, give God some praise for this woman of God here. Let me tell you, let me tell you, God has shown up and shown out in the word today. First of all, Pastor Kalisa, we're just so thankful for the energy you brought here today. Let me just say, she, she, she was a little more excited than when the first time then that she came the first time you know why because the first time she had no child and, and i don't know if you remember we prophesied on her and i said next time you come back here you're gonna have a child this handsome husband cannot stay without no child. come on y'all better stand up so the church can see that baby beautiful baby that's why she got so much energy today. She's so happy. Come on, husband. Come on, husband. Come on, give, give, give him a round of applause for supporting his wife. Praise God. Praise God. We're so happy. God, God answers our prayers. Amen. He sure does. If you single, or you come here, don't let us pop. You're going to have children. So far, everybody I prophesied on got children. In Jesus' name. And then you got the memo too. You look like my wife. You wearing the same color as my wife. I don't know. The Holy Spirit told y'all something. Yeah, and Jesus. I, I need to take a picture or something. So this will conclude. This conclude the month of flowers. Every single year. Yeah, give yourselves. The, I want you to clap your hands. Give a hearty amen for the women, for the flowers of new generation and everywhere to, around the world. Y'all could do better than that. Let me hear you men. Speaking of flowers, we are going to honor our flowers in a special way tonight. We're not just hearers of the words, but we are doers of the words. We don't just tell our women we love them in mouths only, but we show them through our actions. And so if, 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 you, if you take a peek, if somebody took a peek, at the fellowship hall right now you will realize it's not the same fellowship hall we had last week it's because tonight we are gonna have a special gala for the ladies for the flowers of new generation and everybody else in the community amen so I, I invite all of you to come and I know a gala of this caliber should cost but it's free for y'all it costs somebody something but it's free for the ladies. Amen? So, Sister Galisa, uh, Kalisa, Pastor Kalisa, if you're not doing anything tonight, 7.30, you could bring your husband. I think I talked to you about that already. Okay, I, I apologize. Yeah, so anyway, so if you are, if you didn't have prior engagements, please come tonight. The way I see the churches, if all of y'all come back, it's going to be packed. So, first come, first serve. Evening gowns. All right? 
You act like you're about to get married. Dress up. Dress for the occasion. Uh, are we going to check at the door if they dress properly for the occasion? Nah. You can come. If you don't have a, 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 a new dress, it's okay. But please try your best and we'll receive it. I'm telling you, oh, you won't regret it. All the men, men, let me tell y'all something. If you come tonight and think you're going to be sitting on a table and get served like, like the, you, 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 you come to the wrong event. We're going to need all the men to be butlers tonight. Yeah, I don't hear the women. The women have served us long enough. Amen? All year long, they're in the kitchen. All year long, they serve that dish and the food out. Tonight, we're going to be the one taking the order. Men, women dress in evening gowns. Men, we dress in black and white like butlers. And we'll come and serve. And, and, and you only eat after all the women eat. And if you have like big eaters who have second rounds, you're in trouble. <laughs> but no, no men eat until all the women eat. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. We're going to start with a devotional, with a discussion. You're going to want to be there for that. And then we're going to have special music. Beautiful. It's going to be a beautiful event. We're going to take pictures. It's something you cannot miss. It is at 7 30 p.m. If you're watching online, you want to make it to the campus, go ahead and be here by 7.30 and you'll be part of the people, uh, all the women that are being honored tonight. Thank you so much. Did you have fun during this month hearing all the ladies preach? Yeah, we, I feel like we got to keep doing this, man. We got to keep doing this. Praise be to God. Next week is going to be prayer day. What is going to be? Prayer, praise, and fasting. That's what we call it. PPF, prayer, praise, and fasting. How many of y'all were there for the last prayer day? We had a grand time in Jesus' name. You never thought you could have so much fun pray, praising and praying to God. But yes, at New Generation, we do a little differently here. We praise God. We enjoy being in the presence of our God. So make sure you are here next week uh, for our day of uh, prayer. Uh, it is time for an for, uh, uh, offertory. We are going to collect our offering, but we have a couple of more points because, you know, we're gonna, we, we, we went back to work. The, no, the nomination committee, we went back to work. We, we came back. Uh, we heard you. We heard all your comments. We came back with an updated uh, nom uh, nomination list. So you're going to want to be here for that. Also, we have a special ba baby dedication. God has increased our numbers with the babies. We had a lot of pandemic babies, and there's one more. <laughs> and, and now we get ready for the post-pandemic babies. And so now we're, we're going to ask you, but first things first, we've got to take care of the house of God. Amen? I don't want none of y'all to start leaving, so I'm going I'm I'm to collect the money first. Is that all right with y'all? Amen. Amen. All right. Let's sing, let's sing, let's sing um, uh, 195. What, what, what? Yeah, yeah, 195. We're saying 195. You know how we do it here. You bring your offering to the front. No one is going to go around and beg you for, for Jesus' money. That's his money. Make sure you give it to him gladly. Start writing your checks. Do what you got to do. Is, is, it, is it 195? Yeah, shower of blessing. Yeah, shower of blessing. Yeah. Yes. As we sing, bring your, bring your offering. We don't do the Q&A because we had an altar call and I didn't want to take away from that. 195. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. Oh, there shall be season refreshing. Sent from the Savior of Precious reviving again oh, 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 over the hills and the valley Sound of abundance of rain Showers of blessing Showers of blessing we need The us a 
Watching online and you would like to participate go ahead and uh, we, we have we have the information for you to do so you have three ways of giving you can always go to Adventist giving and uh, choose new generation SDA church or you can mail it to this campus 12800 North Miami Avenue or you can bring it in person and somebody will be there to receive it for you all right Thank you so much for participating in the building of God's kingdom. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, we want to thank you. First and foremost, we want to thank you for this great and wonderful message that you have brought to our soul. Not only you cleanse us, but you have called us to put us in the community, oh God. And then we can claim all the promises that you have made unto us because we are yours. We want to thank you, oh God, for the vessel you have used Pastor Kalisa, may you continue to bless her, bless her mind, bless the word that you put in her, that anointing that you have in her, allow her to live uh, the full calling, for, to live the full purpose of her existence as she has called us to do today. I pray that you will take away the fear in her, take away the fear in all of us, help us to step into, you, into our calling in you because you have promised to equip those you have called. Lord Jesus, I thank you right now for all the gifts, all the monetary gifts that we have received. We thank you for the givers. We, all, we thank you, O oh God. We pray that every penny will go to the advancement of your kingdom and to the building of your church. We pray, O oh God, that you will bless those who aspired to give but who were not able to give at this time. May next time they have an opportunity, they too, to be part of this great commission. We thank you, God, for what you've done, what you are doing now, and what you will continue to do. Bless us indeed and enlarge our territory. Keep us from sin that we may be free from pain. And in the end, may your will alone be done in each of our lives. Nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Let God's people say, Amen. Praise God. Deacons, thank you so much. We are now going to present baby Ethan to the Lord will the parents of Ethan Noel come forward right now yes 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 all who came to support the family you may come as well yes Jesus loves the little children the little children all the children are oh look at that cute picture and the red light all our precious in his life jesus loved the little children of the world jesus loves the little
for Sister Stacy and Brother Frito to come t and face me here. Yes, yes, go ahead and do that. And yeah, I'd like for you, all of you, Stacy number two, <laughs> to to face me. Yes, yes, in Jesus' name. Church, are you glad to see this family? Yes. Amen. We praise God for you. I know you live a little ways, but this is your church. Amen. This is your church. Anytime you feel, just come and be part of the worship. As our as as a custom, whenever we present a baby, they're a part of the cradle roll. So, just so you know, hey man, uh, Pastor Kalisa, what church you used to go to again? <laughs> Amen. Praise be to God. We 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 love. I, I love to meet with the parents of the children, but prior to them coming uh, to present their babies, and I had the opportunity to do so uh, with brother uh, brother Frito and sister Stacy. We had a great conversation about baby Ethan, and we we're so I'm so glad that baby Ethan is born in a family that will raise him in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. We we know that they're equipped to do so, and because I agree with their method of raising little Ethan, I come before you today, and I pray that you will agree with them in prayer that we may present this baby unto the Lord. The text that I want to share with you today is found in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 8. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 8. I read from the ESV version, which reads, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. We have some Bible scholars here, yes. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. In other words, with everything you've got, right? It's got to be with mind. It's got to be with feelings. And it's got to be with your actions. We cannot love God with just words only, but we got to love him with everything we've got, right? Verse 6, and these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. At all times, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. It's so funny how... I already had this verse in mind, and, I, and on my way here, um, I listened to Open Line from, you know, uh, from, from the Christian radio, from Moody Radio, and then they were discussing this very text and what that actually meant. And you know how the Jews, they had the, the, they had the uh, I think they called them Tephilim, you know, the little front list, they, they have it on their forehead and their hands, and, and, and um, the, the host made it clear that this was not, it was, it's okay to do that, to remind yourself to post them in your home. But the ultimate goal, what God actually meant was to really have this word, not only in your mind, but also in your heart, but also in your action. And wherever you go, whether you're going out, that word is with you. When you come back in, that word is with you. And you should not live as a Christian inside your home, but outside you're living as someone else. You understand me? And so, but the main point of this text here today for you for this occasion is that you, the God, God says in verse 7, you shall teach them diligently to your children. Here is, here is the key. Can you teach something you don't know? Ha! Huh. So, so it starts with the parents. If you are to teach it to your children, you must know the word yourself. The preacher exhorted us in the this, in this sermon saying, we cannot let the word be collecting dust in our home. The children must know early on that this is a house of God. And we study the Bible here. The Bible is our guide. Amen? And, and, so, and, also, and also, we don't just have to teach it to them, but we have to demonstrate it in the way we live. Amen? So that means the way you treat each other as parents, the kids are watching. 
Mm -hmm. Sir, you are his first God. You didn't hear what I just say? See, the church quiet on me. Whenever somebody says something, I used to hear it. You are his first God. In other words, you are his first example of God. So if I didn't say the example, y'all ain't going to say amen. Y'all, it's like heretics. You don't know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, you're the first God he knows. Because the, you, the way you treat his mama is going to say a lot about who you are as a dad. The way you treat him he, it, it's going to have an impact on how, how he sees God. That's what I mean by her first God. You understand? You are his first example. And, and as I told you, many young men have a bad relationship with God. Why? Because they have a bad relationship with their earthly father. If the earthly father does not give an example of what the heavenly father is, they won't know who he is. So you have a, an enormous responsibility, sir. No pressure. <laughs> but you are his first example of who God is mom you already know you are the anchor of the house you are the one the way you treat dad gonna teach him what kind of what kind of woman he needs in his life have you heard men say all the time I want I want a woman just like who just like my mama right so you're gonna be the first example the way he the what, what you show him in the house is what he's gonna know so I pray to God I pray to God that you take this commitment seriously, that you do your part and trust that God will do his. Amen. I'm going to pray for you now. I'm going to need all my elders to come forward, all the elders to come forward and help me out. And I need a mask. I forgot my mask again. Yes. Yeah, because it's a baby. It's a new one. It's a new one. You sure? <laughs> Yeah, he smells new. It's good. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Elders come and surround the babies and surround the family. Help me. They usually try to snatch them. Let us pray. Bow your heads where you are. Family, just. Father in heaven, we are so thankful that the best example of a father is you. Father, when you decided to create mankind, you didn't just create us and leave us to ourselves. But before you made us, you created everything we would ever need. And so today again, the preacher reminded us that we have all we need in Christ Jesus. This is a reminder that you respect us even as your children. You do not, you do not create us and for us to go and look for what we need and how to survive. You have given everything that we need to survive. And so today, oh God, we bring this little baby to you, precious, handsome little baby, cute little baby. Father, we thank you that even now you, are, you have already made provisions for him because that's the kind of God you are. Before he was born, you already had a calling for his life. As you said to your servant, before you were born, I knew you. And so we have reasons to believe today that Ethan did not come by accident. He did not come by accident regardless of what the parents may think. <laughs> you had plans for him. You had ordained for him to be here. And if you created him, we know you're going to make a way for him to thrive in this world. 
So, Father, we present him to you before we present him to you today, O oh God. We pray that you will bless him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. May he always at the head and never at the tail. May you bless his intellect, O oh God, that he will be smart, that he will be quick to pick up things, and he will know right from wrong. And may he choose, may he choose right every time. We pray, O oh God, that you will surround him by the power of your Holy Spirit. Put a head of fire around him. That even when the environment is bad around him, even when the kids around him would not have the same upbringing of, uh, with him, but he will be a leader and not a follower. I pray that your light will shine over him, will shine in him, and will shine through him. I pray that you will give him a robust health, oh God. I pray that he, he grows up to be a healthy fella. And help him to be a pillar in your kingdom. Father, come what may. May he not do deconstruction now or decompressing whatever the preacher was talking about. The young people are doing now. Trying to question God. But help him to hold on to his God. Through elementary school. Through middle school. Through high school. Through college and university. Help him to hold on to you, oh God. And when you return in your glory... He will be amongst the elect. I pray, oh God, that you will give the parents the means to, to give them the best education possible, oh God. I pray that you will guide, direct them, show them the path, and help them, oh Father, to, to choose Christian education because nowadays, oh God, we don't know what they're teaching our kids in the public school system. And so I pray, oh God, that you will seize his mind. Let him be yours, mind, body, and spirit now and forever we love you dad we cannot wait to see your face bless ethan help him oh god to be a pillar in your kingdom in his family and in society at large i pray that you bless him indeed and enlarge his territory keep him from sin that he may be free from pain and in the end may your will alone be done in his life nothing more nothing less and nothing else in the match less than what Jesus I pray, let God's people say, Amen. Amen. You, if you if you see if you watch my face, you see I'm sweating a little more than usual because I can't make no boy. So I don't want him to fall. So I'm very nervous about holding him. You you prophesying? <laughs> My wife says she reject that prophecy. <laughs> I present to you now the newest member of our cradle roll, br brother Ethan Noel. <laughs> Praise God and. And so family here, let me just say, those of you who are here, it takes a village to raise a child. So if you are part of his life, make sure you stand in the gap whenever you need to. Amen. Thank you for your support. May God bless you. Continue to pray for them. Thank you so much. All right. We have one more point in the program. But those of you who are not members, we're not going to hold you. Uh, so we're going to conclude the service with number 518. And then we will call the names for nominations. Make sure if you are a member or if you're joining the church, you know, uh, please, you stay here. Remain so that you can hear your name and hear how we're moving forward. Number 518, let's stand together, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of God. The promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, that is praise He free. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Set, 
second stanza, second stanza. I only want to hear the ladies sing. Only the ladies sing second stanza, standing on the promises that cannot fail. Here we go. Standing. Oh, yeah. Sounds good. Come on, ladies. All right. Mighty men, help them. I need to hear you. Standing on the promises of God, Lord. No harmony, man. Let me hear. Let me hear. Strong Lord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises. All right, stop it. Stop it. No mic. No mic. I only want to hear the men. I, I don't hear nobody but y'all. Let me hear the men sing the third stanza. Standing on the promises of Christ, the Lord, bound to Him eternally. By love, strong court. Here we go. Stein. Where are my men? Come on, men. All right, ladies, help them. Help them. Standing on the promises. Standing on the promises of God, my sin. One more time, standing, standing on the promises, standing on the promises, standing on the promises of right my sin. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Remain standing for the benediction. Uh, by the way, uh, the Noah family, I forgot to give you your certificate, so please come and grab it for, uh, for me, please. Your certificate. By his close your eyes. Oh, Heavenly Father, we are so glad that you came to visit our church today once more. It was a high day in Zion from the praise to the preacher. You have blessed our hearts, oh God. You have reminded us that we are your children. We have so many riches. You have equipped us so good for this life, but yet we have been living so shy of the full calling to which you have called us. We, we are walking in defeat when we should be walking in victory. Father, we, we, are, we are walking powerless when we should be walking in power. Father, you have done so much for us even before we were created. You have created everything we would ever need. But in addition to the material things, you have given us the X factor, which is the Holy Spirit. And through him, we can do all things. And so, Father, thank you for this reminder. We pray, oh God, that we'll take heed to this sermon today. That we'll apply it in our lives. To, 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 to reshift our thinking, knowing that if God has called us, he will equip us. He will equip us. And what he who started a good work in us, he is faithful to complete it. Thank you for what you have done here today through this sermon. And may we have a testimony very soon to say how we were sleeping in this gospel. We were sleeping. We did never tap into this, 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 great, this great power. But now we have and look at what God is doing in our lives. Let this church continue to be a beacon of light that when everyone set foot in here, they will feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. We love you, Dad. We cannot wait to see your face. As we depart from this place, may we never depart from your holy presence. We pray now all together. May you bless us indeed and enlarge our territory. 
may you keep us from sin that we may be free from pain and in the end may your will alone be done each of our lives nothing more nothing less and nothing else in the match less than jesus i pray let god's people say amen 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 you may be seated give god a round of applause if you receive the word praise be to god if you're watching online thank you for being a part of our service today we pray you will see we'll see you next week for prayer praise and fasting until then may god bless you real good amen We pray that this worship experience transformed your soul, refreshed your hearts, and renewed your spirit. New Generation is a multicultural church that loves God and loves people. It is our desire that you have a life-changing encounter with the Creator of the universe. We are located at 12800 North Miami Avenue in the beautiful city of North Miami, Florida. Please feel free to interact with us on our social media platforms. Like us on Facebook subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Instagram. Thank you for joining us. Please join us next time for another worship experience.